Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 15 of the simple series of my 68000 assembly trip programming tutorials. And at the moment, I'm looking at sprite clipping on a variety of systems. And today, we're looking at the Atari ST. And if I use my controller here and I select the window, that would probably help. We can move our Chibiko around the screen like before, but now our Chibiko can partially go off the screen. Now, one limitation of the code we're looking at today is that we are moving horizontally in bytes. So we're moving in eight pixel jumps, which is a little bit jerky. But next time, we'll look at an improved version of this code. Hopefully, if I can get it working, we'll have a look at the improved version, which will move a bit more smoothly with any any luck if I get my finger out and get programming. Anyway, so we'll be looking at this today. We'll be looking at the cropping routine, and this is a common routine that I've been pretty much porting to all of my systems, including the 8-bit ones, so um, we'll be having a look at that. Anyway, let's go over to the theater screen and let's discuss the concept of logical coordinates, which is what I'm using to do my X and Y calculations. So the problem basically I have when working on 8-bit systems is I want to work with a single byte coordinate for my X and Y position, and I've got a sprite that can move not just around the screen, but also partially off it. Now, if my screen is 256 pixels wide, which a lot of systems are, and I'm just using a 0 to 256 coordinate, that's going to cause a bit of a problem. So what I do is I use a logical coordinate system, which is very simple. Basically, one logical unit is two physical pixels. So basically, what I have is, if you look at this screenshot here, what I've got is a logical screen in the middle, which is visible. And then I've got this invisible area around that visible screen here. And the coordinates go from 0,0, 0 to 255, 255. And on a 256 by 192 screen, I'd have a logical size of 128 by 96. And the first logical pixel would be 64 logical units across and 80 logical units down. And the last one would be 192, 176. So that's my logical units, and that's how I work on all of these systems, including the 16-bit ones, which don't really need this, but for compatibility, for the ease of porting games and things, it's nice to have something common across all systems. So that's the concept of logical units. What about the cropping algorithm I'm going to be using? Well, again, it's the same on all systems. So let's go over to the blackboard. Let's take a look at that. So we've already got this drawn up from the last Amiga tutorial. So basically, we have a screen. And you can see we've got our screen here. And then we've got some kind of sprite. And this is the sprite. And our sprite is going to move around the screen happily as it goes, maybe. And it's a time from time going to go partially off the screen. And at that point, we're going to have to do some recalculations. We're going to have to change our starting draw position to this because we don't want to, we can't draw from an off screen position. We're going to change our height of our sprite to the remaining part that's visible. And then our source bitmap data, we're going to skip some of it so that we start drawing from the first visible part of our sprite. Now, that's what we do if we go over the top of the screen. If we go over the bottom of the screen, it's much easier because all we need to do is we don't need to change our starting position. We just change the height of the sprite. We don't need to change the source bitmap data either. But we do if we go over the left hand side of the screen in this position. We need to skip this first part of the sprite here. We need to change the width and the starting X position to this. And then after each line of our sprite, we need to skip the next part of the bitmap data here. It's different though if we're on the right hand side of the screen, because on the right hand side of the screen, well, we're drawing the very first pixel of our sprite here. We need to change the width. But then after each line of our sprite, we still need to skip the part here. And of course, our sprite could be off multiple sides of the screen at the same time. We could have exciting combinations like this. And fun fact, Chibi Akamas on the Z80 systems couldn't do that correctly because I was a very bad mathematician. I'm still a very bad mathematician, but slightly less a very bad mathematician. So I've managed to get the algorithm working today. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So we've got this cropping algorithm and this updated sprite routine, which will draw the resulting bitmap to the screen. Well, let's go over to the source code. Let's take a peek. Let's see what we've got. OK, so here is the source code today. The first thing we're doing is we're defining the symbols for the logical screen, the minimum x and y of the first visible pixel on the screen, and the width and height in logical units. Now, our screen is 320 by 192, as we've defined it here. But um, th that's in logical units. And we're going to use those to do our sprite cropping. Now, the basis of this code is the simple series joystick example. So we're not going to discuss how the joysticks work, and we're not going to discuss certain parts of the bitmap. All we're going to start from is the updated draw player routine, which now works with this uh, glorious Chibico, which we can now crop. OK, the Chibico bitmap, that's this thing here, that's the mascot here, that is 48 by 48 pixels. 
but we're working in logical units and remember two pixels per logical unit so that's 24 by 24 logical units we store that in d3 and d6 we store the source bitmap address in a6 that's our source bitmap of our chibiko bitmap and then we run the routine do crop now this will set the carry if the sprite is entirely off the screen so we'll be using this little thing as our sprite and if it's off the screen like that then we have nothing to do so we're just going to give up so that's what our cropping routine is going to do and we're going to take a look at that cropping routine right now here it is so our cropping routine well we pass d1 and d4 as the x and y position in logical units and we pass d3 and d6 as the width and height in logical units and we pass a6 as the bitmap source in memory now we're going to use d2 and d5 as temporary variables and we're also going to use a variable called sprite h clip and this is for when our sprite is partially off the left or partially off the right because in both cases we're going to need to skip a few bytes before we start getting more data from that source bitmap that's what that's going to do okay so d0 is our temporary variable that we're using for our calculations like an accumulator so we're going to start by considering the top of the sprite so we're moving the y position into d0 and we're subtracting the minimum visible y logical unit so this is basically going to nudge our sprite up in logical units and if our sprite is partially off the screen this is going to go negative and if it's not we're just going to skip but if it's gone negative we're going to convert that back to a positive because that's the amount we're going to need to remove from the top of our sprite we're then going to compare that to the height of the sprite because there's every possibility our sprite is entirely off the screen it could be somewhere like this it could be completely off the screen and we don't want to try and draw zero because we'll probably crash and we don't want to waste time so in that kind of case we're going to go to the all off screen routine and all that does is very simple it just sets the carry flag and returns so that's telling the calling routine you know, just give up there's nothing to do so that that's what we're doing there if there is something partially on the screen then we're storing the amount to remove in d5 and we're resetting d0 now d0 is going to be moved back to the new y position it's not back to pixels yet or lines but it's closer because we've now removed the minimum logical position so we've had to zero that if we are partially off the top of the screen because we would be starting to draw effectively from line zero in that case so that's why we were clearing d0 there okay so we've done the top now let's take a look at the bottom so we're now adding the height of the sprite and then we're subtracting the height of the screen in logical units and if that is not zero then we are not partially off the bottom of the screen but if we are then we are now going to take that amount and we're going to see if that's the entire height of the sprite because again maybe we're entirely off the bottom of the screen if not then we're going to store that amount removed from the bottom in d2 so d5 contains the amount removed from the top and d2 contains the amount removed from the bottom we're now going to use those two together and see what needs doing so what we're doing here is we're taking the amount to remove them from the top adding the amount to remove from the bottom and if it's not zero we're subtracting that from the height of the sprite so we've updated the height of the sprite there but what we also need to do is remember if our sprite partially off the top we might need to skip some of those first bytes of our sprite and that's what we're going to do here so what we're doing here is we are converting the number of lines we need to remove from the top from logical units to pixel lines we're then multiplying that by the width of the sprite in logical units which is also conveniently the same as the number of bytes because there's two pixels per logical unit and there's also two pixels per byte so it's the same thing so that's the number of bytes we need to skip and we're adding that to our source memory address of our bitmap data so that's removing those first lines there if needed okay so we've now done the top and the bottom we're now going to do the left and the right so we're clearing d2 and d5 we don't need the old values anymore we're going to basically do the exact same thing for the left and the right hand side so we're now moving the x position into d0 subtracting the minimum x and we're seeing if our sprite is partially off the left hand side of the screen so maybe it's somewhere like that maybe it is and so if it is then we're going to negate that and we're then going to compare it to the width of the sprite and if it's entirely off the screen we're going to skip up if it's not though we're going to do something extra what we're doing here is we're rounding up because we can only move in eight pixel chunks and so we need to make sure if we are just like seven pixels off we need to round up to a whole eight pixels so we're adding for here and we are moving that resulting amount to remove to d5 we're then zeroing the x position because again we are starting from the far left in that case so that's what we're doing there and we're updating our x position here okay so we've cropped the left hand side now let's do the right hand side so what we're doing here is we're adding the width of our sprite to d0 and we're then subtracting 
the width of the screen in logical units and this calculates if there's anything to crop and if there is anything to crop once again we are seeing if that's the entire width of the sprite and if it is then we're giving up otherwise we're storing that in d2 so d2 is the amount removed from the right d5 is the amount removed from the left okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add those two together here and that's going to effectively calculate to the amount to remove from both sides. We see if that's zero. And if it's not, then we're going to calculate the amount to crop. Now, we're going to need to crop bytes after each line if we are off the left hand side or the right hand side. So that's what we're doing here. So we're converting that to a byte count here and we're moving that into sprite H clip. And we'll see that later on in our drawing routine. So then what we're doing is we're subtracting that from the width of our sprite. And finally, what we're going to do is we are going to handle the removal of any pixels on the left hand side of our sprite if we're off the left hand side of the screen. So that's what we're doing here. We're converting D5 into a number of bytes here. And then what we're doing here is we are effectively adding that to A6 here. And that is moving the source bitmap data as required for the left hand side of our sprite. What we're finally doing here is we are clearing the carry flag and returning and that's going to pass over back to the drawing routine here and assuming the carry is clear we're going to carry on with our drawing okay so what we're doing here is we are then going to round the width of our sprite into a number of bytes here because we can only draw in entire bytes horizontally and assuming that that's not zero then we're going to continue trying to draw we're then subtracting one here and that's because we're using a dbra which has an execution for the zero case so that's why we're doing that and then what we're doing here is we are converting d6 from logical units to physical lines we're then also converting the y pos into physical lines but we're converting the x position into a byte position and that's for our get screen pos routine so we're converting that into a the coordinates that our get screen pos routine requires here okay so we've calculated a, our vram destination now and that is going to be in a2 so what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer bytes from our source bitmap in a6 here into the destination in a2 but we're going to eor them with the screen destination and the reason for that is um, this is an xor sprite which means if we draw it twice it's an inversion routine so the second draw will remove the first and leave the background intact nice and easy for a simple example like this so that's what we're doing now our source data uses four bytes consecutively for the four bit planes of the screen here so we're transferring all four bit planes here and then what we're doing here is we're having to deal with the um, rather weird um, Atari ST memory layout. Basically 16 consecutive pixels have a word of data for bit plane zero, then a word of data for bit plane one, and then a word of data for bit plane two and then three. And this means for every even byte, we just need to add one, but for every odd byte, we need to add another six. And this is because we need to move eight bytes for every 16 pixels across the screen. So that's what this code's doing here. This is the same as in the simple ser the previous series, simple series example. What we're then doing here though, is we're dealing with that sprite H clip, because this is the amount of bytes of the source bitmap we need to skip after each line. So we're adding that to our source memory address in A6 of our bitmap here. And then we're moving down one screen line by adding 160 because the screen is 320 pixels wide and it's 16 colors. So that's 160 bytes. So we're adding that and we're repeating until our height reaches zero. And that's the end of it. So this is pretty similar to before. We're, I don't think we were using Eeyore before, but um, Eeyore's a lot more convenient for a simple example like this. And we've got our Sprite H clip here. So there we go. So that's the end of today's example. Now, if you liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Because if you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people. And I have a good day and I make more content. And the content I'm planning to work on next is to update this Sprite clipping example and make it move in nice, pi smooth pixel movements. So if you like Atari ST content, please like the video and please subscribe so you see that and um, I will make more content. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.